Uh -huh. Right. Do you know the greatest thickness of the uh, of these on on the uh, underbelly? What would be the thickest one, and where it would be located? On the nose of the space shuttle orbiter, it can range from as thick as five and a half inches, and as it goes further back from that five and a half, it can be as thin as a half an inch back toward the tail. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. You're welcome, Carrie. So, Chris, there's a, an understanding from an education specialist here of how the tiles work. And, and I also understand, Carrie, they're not really they're not bolted on. They're they're applied with some sort of adhesive, and there's a, a question about that yes, as well. Yes, that's correct. And as you know, when, when the shuttle program first began, they actually had problems attaching them on there. And that was really a, a real sort of an engineering feat that they needed to come over with. Uh, and they eventually did determine how to get these on there. What are they now stuck onto the bottom with? Because as we know, in those initial okay. flights, sure. they were coming off. Right. Well, a lot of reasons those, those were initially uh, shaken, they were literally shaken off during the launch. There was not enough sound attenuation or water to prevent the, the shaking so much. The tiles were actually affixed to a Nomex pad. Think of it as a, as a felt batting material, which can protect from that fire heat of reentry. But we use a, a glue, the technical name is RTV, our room temperature vulcanizer. And that actually, the pad is glued onto here and then glued onto that aluminum airframe. Now aluminum, as you know, has to be protected from temperatures up to about 350 degrees, then it may start to degrade. Okay. Right? And, and the, the, the thing that's interesting here is, as we saw this protecting, you know, uh, from temperatures really that are hotter than the surface of the sun, the aluminum substructure, the skin underneath that he's talking about, I've been talking to uh, former astronaut Kurt Brown, who did six missions, about that, and he explained that the actual aluminum sub, uh, skin there really only was good up to about 300 degrees. So you understand the importance and the value of what these tiles do. Carrie Sanders, that was fascinating, important information. Thanks to you and thanks to Jeff as well. And we want to remind you that we are watching and waiting for that NASA briefing on the Columbia disaster. Expect it to start in about uh, 15 minutes from now. We'll have it for you live on MSNBC. Tonight's prime time on MSNBC starts at 7 with Countdown Iraq. Join Lester Holt for live reports and the latest technology. Everything you need to know in 60 minutes. Then, real people, real stories. Donahue takes on the issues that matter to you at 8. And no BS. Just 83 degrees to minus 400. Very, very cold inside. That orange spray-on insulation is a completely different chemical mix. It's applied differently. And NASA's also looking at the preparations that were done to the structure of that tank mm -hmm. and how that tank was, uh, this particular tank that Columbia flew with, how it was actually processed down in uh, the New Orleans area, and uh, are there any quality control issues there? Well, I read something this morning about it being the consistency of a brick. Is it harder than this material here? The density is definitely different. The tiles are extremely lightweight. If you recall back in uh, the late 1979-1980 time frame, uh, at Kennedy Space Center, the tiles were removed, about 28,000 tiles. Mm -hmm. And if you notice on the back, this gray uh, material, it's a very it's hard color density. color than the interior of Right. Here. That's what was added to the space shuttle tiles that were removed. Uh, the problem was back in 1979 and 80 that the glue that holds the tile on could not hold on to this very porous material. So the tiles were removed, this densification process was added, mm -hmm. and the tiles were reattached. And we should say the pictures we're watching right now are not of Columbia. This was Discovery, I understand. And as you can see here, that's the, the reassembly process with these tiles. Now, this coating that, that's on here, that we see now that uh, matches the, the black tiles there on the, uh, the, yes. on the shuttle we just saw there on the video. This is actually, you say, a glass substance that's sprayed on here? Yes, it's a ceramic glass that is sprayed on when the tile is manufactured it's it's literally machined and the white tile is then coated uh like uh just a spray on coating mm -hmm. and then that coating is is cured to a glass finish but we're talking sports section carries huge in one of yeah. your fingers and i noticed that. it was able you were able to flake that yeah. off there pretty easily as a matter of fact i can see comes off here correct at, it, it's look. very easy just to flip up uh some of the hard coating there yeah. And, and realize that this is 1969 technology. So what's in the pipeline right now for, for what's coming down for next? I'm assuming yeah. that they're looking at new technologies to replace it. NASA this has right. been looking for years with contractors into new technologies for making the existing system more durable and other alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been going on for years with NASA. There's a lot of information known there. NASA needs the technical and the financial support to do these programs to not just for shuttle, but all future reentry vehicles where high-speed reentry, 
not only through our atmosphere, but mm. other atmospheres of other planets would yeah. be important as well. Fascinating. Well, Randy Avera, thanks for bringing that in. Stick around because we're going to talk with you some more. We're expecting this press conference to get underway in uh, about maybe 12 minutes or so. And we want to talk to you both into and out of that as well, okay? Very good. Randy Avera, expert on the, the shuttles, and uh, thank you for bringing in that uh, tile. Fascinating stuff. Still to come this hour, much more. What went wrong aboard the space shuttle? For minutes past the hour, a critical part of this investigation clearly underway on this Monday morning, picking up that debris. The painstaking search for debris continues in East Texas and Western Louisiana. Here's a map that we've drawn out from this part of Texas all the way down to Leesville, Louisiana, and one of the greatest places of concentration, Nacogdoches County in Texas. That's where they have collected so far 1,200 confirmed debris sites at this time, and that's likely to go up. MSNBC's uh, Ashley Banfield joining us live from Negadoches to talk more about what they have uncovered and discovered and how much more they expect to find. Hi, Ashley. Hi, I can already update that number. It's up to 1,500. It was 1,200 uh, at last report, and we're expecting a briefing in the next hour. Perhaps that number will climb even more when the officials tell us the, uh, the numbers that have been coming in, keeping in mind that at an early point yesterday, they were getting 125 calls an hour. That has slowed and diminished to 25 calls on average per hour from residents who found pieces of debris in their yards, in the, on their property, or else on the street corners, or even in large fields like this. As a matter of fact, just a couple of hours ago, um, can you, Bob, can you just swing over there really quickly to that piece? Here on the media spot, it's a little messy, but uh, I just wanted to show you right where we've been broadcasting, uh, a couple of sheriff's deputies showed up marked off a spot right there that they found a small debris piece. So that's kind of part and parcel of how things have been happening here. Joining me is uh, Lieutenant Tony Hasso of the um, Nacogdoches Constables uh, to talk to me a little bit not only about that, but the search efforts too. This is a very unusual thing. All of a sudden, two officers showing up, roping it off, guarding it. Is this what you've been finding? I mean, in the most unusual places, people walking back and forth and all of a sudden it's two days later spotting Well, th this has been an unlikely spot to find this. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it was really a surprise to us that that, that was there. Uh, we had a, a person of the media come to the office, and I just happened to be in the lobby area. They came to me and they said, you know, I believe we found something that's similar to, that may be part of the station. I had a look at it. It didn't look, I'm not a scientist, but it right. didn't look that significant to me. I know that you have also, in your uh, searches, found very significant pieces, perhaps circuitry, perhaps control panel. What can you tell me about what you've that's discovered? Correct. We have found some items that look, uh, that have computer circuitry in them. We have found some items that look uh, in the shape of pods. Uh, the size of beach balls, uh, we don't know. We saw some on the, on the television news last night. But there have been a lot of significant pieces that we have found out. Of course, NASA's going to have to come in and be the experts on whether those are going to uh, be keys to this investigation, Absolutely. not the local officials. Correct. Um, and, and just real quickly, because we've had a couple of reports, I think three reports of human remains uh, being found here in Nacogdoches, what confirmation is that 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 might have been actually from the shuttle? Do we know anything along those lines? We, we don't know yet. We've, we've had some reported uh, uh, sites, and we've, we have sent some people out there, but they have not been uh, confirmed that they are. Any personal facts? Anything else? From the Nothing shuttle that at this time. That's been found, and of course you're going to be part of this briefing. I know we've right. kept him waiting, so I should let you go. I know you have okay. a behind-the-scenes briefing before you speak to us publicly. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much, Lieutenant. You're Appreciate welcome. your time, sir, to keep you. I just want to also update you um, that this is a, a significant logging area. The number one of the number one industries in in. Um, in East Texas is logging, and I think we're about to find out that the logging industry is going to be somewhat affected by this disaster. Perhaps one of the announcements that's going to be made in the uh, in the next few moments is that logging is going to have to be uh, either curtailed or they're going to perhaps couple up people with the loggers to see if they can uh, spot for uh, debris because as we've been hearing over and over, this search will go on for a very long time and perhaps we never may recover all of the pieces. I think it's been described by someone as the most sprawling disaster scene, uh, unprecedented uh, in history. That's you. Ashley, uh, one quick question for you. Is there any indication this hour whether or not they hope to assemble all of that debris and try to put the pieces back together to form some semblance of a shuttle at some point in time? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there is. That's going to be so difficult, Sam, because uh, quite clearly, from the debris that we've been seeing, if you're lucky, you'll see a piece that's about this big. Uh, for the most part, things are about that big, sometimes the size of a quarter, a dime. Uh, so taking everything to Barksdale Air Force Base in neighboring Louisiana is going to be a painstaking process. EPA is going to have to determine whether it's dangerous for starters. There's only about six people who are deemed uh, professional enough in this county to handle this stuff. Once they get it over there, they're going to try to assemble it roughly as it might appear. Um, that's not unusual. That's something that happened during the Challenger as well. And I should also mention that the human remains aren't going to Barksdale. They're going to Dover in Delaware, which is exactly what happened 17 years ago with the human remains from the Challenger. All right, Ashley, thank you very much for your reporting from Texas. And of course, 
there will be a memorial in Houston tomorrow uh, with regards to the loss that this country has suffered throughout this weekend. There are a couple of events that are taking place right now, by the, by the way, at the White House. The president is meeting with Sean O'Keefe from NASA. That's going on. And then in about uh, five to ten minutes from now, we expect NASA to begin their daily briefing. And there are a great many questions with regards to particularly an internal memo that we have been reporting about all day long here on MSNBC. Much more on that when we come back. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching America's News Channel, MSNBC.